Impressions video! This will be me giving out all my thoughts I've collected so far about Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I played it, I got my ass up at 6 in the morning yesterday, headed straight for Walmart, got the game. Of course, only Mario would encourage me to get up before the crack of dawn. And I've also been a good boy and not touching any demos, going to Walmart Monday this last week and seeing the demo was in the palm of my hands, just walking away. Not trying to see more footage than what we got in both the initial trailer as well as the Wonder Direct. And yes, I only cleared World 1, but holy if you let me tell you first, beyond the 4 hours of sleep catching up to me while making this video yesterday, that is way more than enough than I or anyone else would need to give impressions on this game. How? I'll start off with that and how mm -mm, full Super Mario Bros. Wonder is, the cliche word, take the subtitle of this Mario game. It's a kindergarten puzzle of English right there, you already know what it is. So Nintendo already gave us details about the game consisting of seven worlds, six different areas surrounding the Petal Isles, the heart of the Flower Kingdom. The last time we had seven worlds was way back in Super Mario World, and most worlds there consisted of roughly five-ish levels, a little more in later worlds, even more counting secret exits, Star Road, and the Special Zone. So some of us were a little worried that might not be enough to compensate the usual length of a Mario game, and we got a glimpse at the map in dots signifying normal levels and smaller levels throughout. I don't think anyone has to worry about whether there's enough content for us to be satiated. The levels in this game that are your usual Mario level length. The stretched out ones meant to be taken slow and have a longer, couple-ish minute structure to it. World 1 has 12 of them. There are 12 lengthy levels in World 1. That's a lot more than what we get in any other 2D Mario early on. The new Super Mario Bros. games. The starting worlds have like around 8 or 9 levels, so assuming that extra 3 is a rough average for the rest of the other worlds in Wonder, just all that on all its own, it's basically matching the quota of most other 2D Marios. But not only is that a thing, there are a lot more levels beyond the worlds we currently have. I'm not gonna name specifics, explore your ass off is all I'm gonna say, but there's a bunch of challenge levels sprinkled in between. Badge challenges, expert badge challenges, races, take out a number of enemies in a time trial. There's 8 of those in World 1, on top of the normal Mario levels. That's basically 20 levels in the first world. 20 levels in World 1. That's meaty, dude. That's so dense for a 2D Mario. You can only imagine how much wilder and denser later worlds and levels are going to get. And I get most of them are either tutorials for badges and are literally 10 seconds, but all of them still serve Wonder Seeds, the main objective of the game, and the game still wants you to go out of your way to do them. The game's got that exact type of freedom for the player in how you progress, like Super Mario Odyssey. Like there, you get the required moon count, and you could keep going to the next world, but the game makes an active and conscious effort of getting you to explore and discover more hidden moons and collectibles, find hidden crevices or higher vantage points, perfecting your platforming, getting more purple coins, a secret moon off a beaten path, that sort of thing. Wonder does the same thing here. There are all these levels you could do, and you do need the required Wonder Seed count to keep progressing, but Wonder's heavily designed around exploration and discovery to where it's making a consistent, very high effort in encouraging you to find as many purple coins and 10 purple coins as possible. Stock up on as many wonder seeds as you can, which some are also obtained via secret exits like past 2D Marios. And in those challenge levels, some wonder seeds you could even buy as well. As if seeing each level's main gimmick and the wonder flower gimmick wasn't already major incentive enough. There's so much going on throughout the game, you might as well should go out of your way and do these spare levels anyway, just from how the game's designed alone. This is the most exploration heavy 2D Mario ever it feels, and the comparisons with Super Mario World don't stop there. Tons of review outlets and journalists rate Mario Wonder really high as this extremely refreshing 2D Mario, the best 2D Mario since Super Mario World, the giant interconnected map like Super Mario World has, New Super U has it as well, but mainly World, and there's bound to be even more. But as much as I love New Super Mario Bros. Wii and DS, my favorite 2D Mario for the longest time was Super Mario World. But Wonder feels a lot more innovative and distinct to justify comparing it to Mario World than New Soup U ever did. I can already tell, this game is immediately a modern classic. How much content it has on display for a 2D Mario, the expressive and charming visuals, our first 2D Mario with a legitimate style, the Wonder Flower, the potpourri of new and distinct enemies, the wonder effects, the music and sound design, like this feels like a modern age Mario World if that makes any sense. Or better put, it does genuinely feel like a proper 
Super Mario Bros. 5, because World was basically Mario 4. I'm already very confident this game will hold up remarkably well for generations to come. It's got a solid feel, the firm platforming of previous 2D titles, but light and floaty physics adjusted well enough that suit all the jumping, good movement and traction in general like the new soup games, great level design and mechanics, and a bunch of other stuff that make it stand out from most other Mario titles. I had a dopey ass grin on my face the whole time I played through the first world. Some determination and shock fluctuated, but I was vibing the whole time. There's a feel good vibe throughout the majority of the game, just seeing what kinds of wonder effects and ideas Wonders got going for it basically every single major level. It does feel like the creativity and imagination 3D Mario gets, that exact level of magic and wackiness fully warping into the 2D games in my opinion. It's a genuinely fun time, every second in the game. From the cartoony animations all the characters have, the new live instrumental sound design, the bright colors, varying visual themes and shakeups, even in the first world. This is the most fun I've had with the 2D Mario ever, and all the hype is completely living up so far. Expectations were very high, but man, I'm still being blown away and immersed in all the wackiness ensuing. None of you guys need me to tell you how much the presentation completely knocks it out of the park. I'll never get tired of bringing up or pondering just how stylized, how unconventional Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Toad and Toadette, Yoshi, Goombas, Boos, Koopa Troopas, a lot of familiar Mario characters look. They don't quite look completely the same as they normally do, and that's really cool. It's like how Mario and Luigi or Paper Mario were stylized takes on the Mario characters in Mario World. This distinct identity for Mario and the others that was such a breath of fresh air for some Mario fans and made them in the overall Mario franchise stand out more and for the better. We got Koopa Troopas that are picked now. It's like a sequence of cartoon animations that are playing out as you play with each character you interact with. It doesn't fully feel like a 2D Mario game, but that's meant in the best way possible. You already know why, given how prominent the stale New Super Mario Bros. ethos was for almost two decades prior to now, but it does make a difference playing it and making it happen yourself in front of your screen, even after seeing and rewatching all the trailers, the direct and whatnot. Just the backgrounds, the hills, the trees, trees, the flowers, the sky, the water, the time of day, the warping colors when the wonder flower happens. The game's art style is so unbelievably beautiful. I can't imagine a 2D Mario looking any better than this, to be honest. It's such a beautiful game, and it is such a fun time. And I always aim to 100% mainline Mario games, but man, new soup games per world probably take a little less than an hour, maybe 50-ish minutes to get all the star coins and secret exits and beating the levels and whatnot per world. Nah, this one took literally two hours. World 1 took a hot minute to fully clear out. There's so much ground to cover in this game, it's insane. And another factor that lends to this game being a lot more leisurely and exploration heavy, something I don't think I ever brought up until now, there's no more timer. Timers in 2D Mario, the vast majority of the time, are pretty generous, but having one at all always invoked that rush, like you can't dawdle for that long, you gotta reach the end of the level at some point, but for the type of game wonder is, it was definitely a smarter move to axe the timer and allow players to play and progress a lot more at their own pace. Take in all the backgrounds, the pretty colors, the level themes, mechanics, ideas and whatnot. On top of that, when you die, you don't get kicked out of the level to where you have to restart it all over again, like Mario 64 or literally the new Super Mario Bros. games. You immediately jump back into the action from the last checkpoint, much like, again, Super Mario Odyssey, adding more to a seamless and well-paced experience. And this game's also a very strong testament to just how much the new Super Mario Bros. formula brain rotted us and Mario, because every turn you expect a usual mannerism those games did. And when one doesn't happen, I'm just like, wait, whoa, that's not right. <laughs> There's a semi-tricky level already in World 1, where you gotta pace with these bull rushes, and there's this rising poison where there's barely any room for error if you screw up. With a secret exit near the end if you have a spare elephant power, the second level in the whole game is a forest- Whoa, no, 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 wait, that's not right. That should be an underground level. Wait, there's already a background foreground level in that same level? There's also a black silhouette styled level already this early on in the game. One such level at all in a 2D Mario. A piranha plant parade happening in the second level and it makes for a genuinely fun and charming auto scroller? Well-timed comedy? In a Mario platformer? 
Are you kidding me? They're taking the plains theme, but gradually fusing it with mountains as you progress in the world, a gradual visual shift of themes all throughout the game, and not even exclusive to two specific themes alone. We got two swampy levels, a forest level, an autumn forest locale, two of them, all in world one on top of any mountainous or grassy terrain level. Like, we're so used to 2D Mario being so generic and plain that any of this in hindsight should feel rudimentary and the standard, but it doesn't. Anytime Wonder does anything creative or non-traditional, I'm immediately thinking in the back of my mind, this feels wrong. 2D Mario was always meant to be thematically and mechanically boring. That's how long Mario's been so samey, how long 2D Mario in particular was just so monotonous and by the books that even the smallest, teeniest type of changes or ideas just feel like a completely different property. But no, it's now got the wow factor the 3D games have in its own creative, breathable way. And I'm, I'm just so happy, man. I'm being wowed by 2D Mario again, almost like I'm a kid again playing New Soup. It's a beautiful feeling. And it's also really nice that it doesn't feel like the Wonder Flower isn't the sole make it or break it factor with these levels too. It's purely adding to levels, already doing a lot for 2D Mario off the rip. Some levels you're inclined to clear without even touching a Wonder Flower or kickstarting its effects. Every level thus far does this very smart design of introducing the main mechanics, whether that's the power-ups, Wonder Flower, or enemies, and easing you into it while amping up those specific mechanics the further along you go, all the while any purple coins and other collectibles in levels have these subtle nudges of either blue flowers glowing in certain patterns, or even regular coins implying such, kind of like the game saying, hey, you, you should probably go up this path in this specific part to a bonus area, or throw this Koopa shell at this block in the wall, or mess around with this mechanic we introduced earlier in a later part of a level in case you feel like you can't either find a Wonder Flower or giant 10 purple coin. The level design's already very good. The explorations kick to the max for a 2D Mario, and there's already a myriad of different themes, enemies, and mechanics already baked into the base levels themselves that 2D Mario's never done before. So there's already some fun to be had and neat surprises from that alone. But the Wonder Flower completely feels like it does nothing but enhance those levels and adds a whole extra tier of zany unpredictability with any weird effects and changes it brings on. You kind of get an idea based on the level's title and the main enemy of that level as well, but outside of stages we got glimpses of in trailers and directs, thank god most of them in the trailers and directs, that's basically a good chunk of World 1. We truly don't know what kind of zany adventure it has in store for us until we play those levels it resides in, never taking away from that level's core mechanic and theme, and just amplifies the wonder and whimsy the game's repping in spades. I love it. And I love how it starts off relatively small for most of the first world. Pipes are rising and lowering, some move like snakes and elevate your platforming, you'll have cute little musical numbers and auto-scrollers literally making them more entertaining than they usually are, raining superstars or starmans, stampeding bull rushes, you being tall and stretched or you're floating in space, some of these repeating but they expand on the concept in later levels or just make the surrounding area of those gimmicks harder. This little flower can do so much and you never know what its limit is. That's such a fun thing for Mario, and a really good incentive for the player to go out of your way and go into more levels. Finding these flowers on the Wonder Seeds and just getting the most out of that wacky beauty, Mario Games Champion. Topped off with how that flower is also consistently wowing you every time. It's wowing me every time at least. Every single time. No Wonder Flower effect thus far has left me indifferent or worse, I've been amazed and entertained by every effect so far. It's just so great. I was already sold just from the first trailer showing it off, and most kind of are after the first level, but literally the second level, with the piranha plant singing. Everyone online is absolutely loving this Wonder Flower effect right here, and it's only the second level. That's how fast the game swerves your expectations with what this thing can do. I enjoyed this level a lot. They went and made an auto-scroller very charming, but my mouth was gaping open like out of ecstatic shock the whole time, and there are more levels that had that effect on me the more I played. Badges are also similar in how good their design is as well, personally. You mess with more of them as the game progresses and you gain new badges in some challenge levels, the wall climb jump, the parachute cap, 
a coin bonus reward whenever you kill enemies, and auto super mushroom at the start of each level. Like, a lot of these feel fun to use and are versatile, but the two big things about them is that A, none of them feel like they completely skew a level's difficulty. The mushroom room gives you a free power up and all, but the game thus far doesn't feel unfair or imbalanced to evoke a need for abusing that badge, and none of the badges feel like they break a level's design so far, and they just serve to give an extra utility that feels balanced. That's pretty damn cool. And B, you can only select one at a time and you gradually obtain more badges the more of the game you play, so the game does encourage the player to not just stick with one or two badges the majority of the time. You're inclined to swap between all of them. There's not a whole lot of badges you're forced to skim through, there's 18 total I'm pretty sure, plus the added benefit of each badge basically getting a short tutorial level in each one, so you know how to use all of them. But they do have some requirement or challenge in just learning how they function, and you get a wonder seed and purple coins in them anyways, so you have a reason to give them a shot and do those challenge levels beyond the initial pull of it, just be a new mechanic for 2D Mario, and it's a lot of different extra abilities too. The badges are just flat out fun and well implemented in the entire game. Everything about Super Mario Bros. Wonder is incredibly well designed so far. I can't imagine it gets any worse if by much from here on out. I've been swapping characters as I play so far. I did Mario, Daisy, Luigi, Toadette, and then Peach. You could conveniently swap characters in the world map. It's very quick, very convenient, and nice. I love the little intro cutscene starting the entire game immediately, it just gives you the chance to get a feel for the game and the story and such. That again is also very Odyssey-like, very 3D Mario-like in general. 64 having you fiddle around in Peach's castle's front yard as your sandbox playground just to get a feel for the controls because it's a brand new genre for Mario, or the Cap Kingdom and Odyssey doing the same after the initial cutscene. Like, they're taking a lot of pages out of 3D Mario in general for this 2D Mario, but the introduction to this game being this interactive cutscene heavily woven into the gameplay itself. You're introduced to the characters, Mario, his friends, the new characters and such, as you're walking to the party held by Prince Florian, and you're easing into the overall atmosphere and vibe the game has. The Mushroom Kingdom in the background's way off in the distance as you enter the Flower Kingdom. You're messing with the base controls, some of the mechanics like the music blocks in the game, coins. Again, it's just ingenious design, both visually and mechanically, to get the player to know and understand how the game will work immediately off the bat. That ease of accessibility Nintendo's been sprinkling in more and more of their Mario games, yet 2D Mario has never done that type of thing before. It's a very simple concept and idea that's alien for 2D Mario, but it is still a very smart design choice on all fronts because it is more than just a simple cutscene. It's that level of interactivity and immersion that makes video games itself just so damn amazing, even for little simple implementations like that. And of course, you got online, I barely scratched the surface for that. There's all these standees you can collect, which also ties into the online, but they also basically function as your stamps from 3D World. There's definitely a lot more about this game that I experienced already now that I could probably prattle on to you guys about more, but I think I'll stop it right there. Bottom line though, a singular timestamp, almost any sole footnote in this entire video, makes Super Mario Bros. Wonder stand out from the rest of the 2D Marios in a very dramatic way. But you combine all of them together, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is just such an intensely entertaining Mario game. The frame you start it. An incredibly whimsical game that leaves such a spectacular first impression that I can't help but just think about the rest of the game and what the rest of it has to offer. The hype is completely living up right now. I know damn well I'm gonna have an insanely fun time for the massive review of this game when I finish, and you guys can tag along with me and my first experience with Wonder as I'm uploading a Let's Play for it on this channel shortly after this video, but the giant review for this and Invincible, the TV show, I think they'll be two major tests for me my content quality and my presentation quality because for a while I've been meaning to delve into deeper analytical content with something a little more just a little animation <laughs> and I think those two in ginormous reviews of some kind will probably be the perfect opportunity for me to see if I can deliver what I'm envisioning in my head that'll amaze you guys and bump up my content more as well without getting a little too conceited or corny without getting into too much detail but We'll see. I'll have a lot more to say on Super Mario Bros. Wonder then, plenty of which will be stuff I've been saying this video, past videos, and more. Look out for a full review of the game in the near future when I finish, but this game, it is 
definitely something truly special for basically any kind of Mario fan out there. It's an extremely fun game so far. I'll see you in the Let's Play, the review, and in other reviews on the channel. Thank you for watching, and stay super! Yes, yes.